So what do we need for setting up WebSocket sessions? Let's start looking into that part. So for that, we need to anyway import socket. Uh, okay, we are not added, added socket IO to this. Let, let's do that. It's going to happen. Let's connect services. What will be the consumer of the socket IO? No, no other uh, layer should even know about this existence of this socket. <clears throat> so I'm going to add it. Let's connect service. Okay, not here. Link binary. Add. <coughs> Cartage iOS. Go for socket IO. I think it needs two top two of these things, task stream as well as socket IO. Both of these dependencies are interdependent. So star socket IO is using star screen. So that's done. Compile import socket io and star screen imported should not give an error fine compiling fine so let's now start setting up the web socket which should be happening within this chat room web socket in its side so what all things we need to do let me just verify once so socket io i think i don't need the star screen instance because internally it is using i can just keep it as socket io and um, we need to have uh, within the init we don't need anything but we will have a setup function which will actually do every stuff so let's create an extension chat room web socket service create a function called setup that I have done in my existing flow and this is where I'm going to have um, it's going to uh, set up couple of things a socket manager and the default socket so two things we need so for that let's create uh, two variables private let private var yeah, private var socket manager socket manager these are uh, basic stuff which we need to anyway do for setting up a socket private var socket socket io client two things we need a socket manager and a socket io client these are within extensions so let me move it within the class level that's done and now let's use that to self taught socket manager should set up my socket manager which will accept um, socket URL so this is something I need to bring in maybe uh, through the I think I can directly pass it here so because I know this is not going to uh, we also only need it uh, okay we can even set it during when I was, I'm setting you whenever I am setting up this one the URL I can pass it through this so I'm just gonna use socket URL it's going to be one URL for socket I'm just gonna use that so maybe I can just call it as socket URL because I have a couple of URLs one is for HTTP, one is for socket. Set up uh, using socket URL, socket URL. So that's done. And now I need to uh, get the client for this socket. So I can just call for the socket. I can ask for the uh, default client self dot socket manager so socket manager we have set up using the socket url and i can then ask for the default socket that's it so your socket is available now for consumption now we need to do on socket uh, setup itself we can just call self dot socket dot connect so this is where it will connect the web socket so to accept the socket url and um, 
sets up the client socket and then connects so we also need to handle the d in it so we can just call d in it and then we can do this socket dot disconnect over here so disconnect is very important once the socket is established if it is not disconnected on d in it of the session on this service that should also be done so we are very much closer to consumption of this and so we have the self to socket connection this connection setting up the manager set uh, asking for the default socket all those things are done but yeah we are yet to make the login call so that's what pretty much soon we are going to do um connect socket all that is done and where do we call this now that's an interesting point let me just verify whatever i have done okay so i'm just doing it at couple of places in my existing implementation i'm not calling it uh, during instantiation but uh, i'm just keeping a uh, config parameters because i need couple of things to actually set up my um, configurations which is like uh, i need to instantiate uh, the uh, configuration based on the uh, base url which i'll be receiving plus i also need to configure based on the user id so those are the two things i need so even before that let's just run this with basic stuff whatever we have right now let's see what happens so i have this function i can maybe directly call it within the um, init itself for the time being so i can just say set up as soon as the init has happened so within init i can always pass the url uh, socket url so now this is going to give me an error because this is now expecting a socket url so i'm gonna blindly use whatever url i, I have which i have used for in within my project which is uh, I have a deployed URL. I'm just gonna directly use it. This is my URL, and I can always convert it into the URL. Using the string deployed URL. I have a local as well as a deployed one. So I'm gonna use that. Cannot before okay it's just before uh, let me capture it maybe I can just capture a string socket URL and then convert that socket url string self dot socket url equal to socket url this should be a url type Using the string self dot socket URL. Let's go back and then change this. enough so this is now accepting the socket service and it is setting up so I guess uh, let's see what happens if it is 
connecting as soon as we even before logging in then we might have to change the flow later because we don't need it to be connected as soon as we launch it so the setup can actually move to a different location instead of having it within the init itself so that's more like on an event based we can actually handle it so let's see what happens it does it connect as soon as this instance is available also we can start using this websocket here to log in right now so my websocket socket manager or the socket is right now available i all whatever i need to do is to call an emit function so if you want to see the implementation it's nothing but uh, uh, every connection as soon as it is established let's let's say if it uh, the if the if i send a request from the server client server will receive it through an emit on this event called login and then handler can accept the nickname and email which is the username and email and then i'm just i'm not doing any kind of validation right now i'm just emitting it back or emitting it to all the uh, whoever is actually subscribed to this so emitting this emit will emit to whoever is actually connected to this specific websocket connection which is within this port so just uh, it will it will happen through this login response event handler login response i'm going to implement that and show it will be received within this login response so this is what the function which will trigger and then um, show the login accepting through using the username maybe i can just name it to let it remain as client name itself i don't want to create a change right now so it's like it's accepting three two parameters returning the three parameters which is the username email and the current time date timestamp on which the login happened so this is what we are going to do the login is what the key is for the event we need to send that emit through this so let's do that so emit what is the event name it should be login i'm going to keep everything separate I'm just using it right now for the time being I'm gonna keep it within an enum or something and this is accepting an item of event so what are the things we are gonna pass let's see so on login we are going to send two items as you can see e e email as e the username and email so let's pass that we have the username and the email so it's just it's going to emit it to the server now and once that emit happens i want to show you the logs of the server that i have i'm just going to show you the logs whenever that happens so that you know that the, um, it has gone and hit the server or not So we need to restart it once because this is um, stop changes up and early process exited. I think let, let's see if it does not restart then we will uh, restart it once and see. So my socket is going to emit from here. We know that the socket connection is established right now on init itself socket gets established and then we emit to that socket with the within the login event with the username and email so ideally this should see we should start seeing the log here in the heroku server that i have received a request and it will start sending a response to whoever is subscribed to it even we can see that once if it once we start subscribing to it so let's do that let's run and see So wish is joining gmail.com. I'm gonna hit login. Login request is received, but do we see anything here? We did not see anything here. Did we? I don't think the WebSocket connection was established yet because we did not recall the setup and all. Setup manager connect happened. Maybe I need to restart this once. 
this time I'll diagnose. Chat server is restarting. Stay change from starting to up. So it's already listening within this port double five six double five. So what is the port that we are trying to connect? We have uh, let's see within use cases use case factory. Okay, we don't need to specify that. This is my uh, deployed. This is my uh, WebSocket server uh, URL and I'm using it to connect to the server which is setting up that uh, socket manager using that socket URL so once the, and, and then after that I'm setting it up so I think this is now running let's see what what is what has changed now I think things are maybe we'll have to restart because it needs to set up things again no logs yet There was a request but nothing is nothing has reached the server so i think more things are needed we need to check that again so let's see what is wrong right now let's see that is it even connecting coming here is what we need to see so it's connecting i think it's too early to do socket connection okay i think we we need some more stuff to be done before this can work because we are not uh, enabled uh, some info previous things so let's do that before doing all this <laughs> 